Welcome all. I'm happy to deliver this keynote address at the start of the water mining project and seeing the project really taking off now. I will not try to summarize all the aspects of the water mining program, but focus on resource recovery from wastewater, its potential and bottlenecks. Wastewater handling has, is and has been an intrinsic part of human society. Already from the times of the Indus civilization, toilet system sewers have been introduced and actually the basic concept of sanitation is largely unchanged in the modern cities compared to these ancient cities. Sanitation is an essential service for society provided to minimize the impact of polluted water on the human society and on natural systems. If you want water systems better integrated in a circular economy nowadays, this means that new technology has to de be developed. But it's even more important and maybe more difficult uh, to change the service-oriented activity and utility towards a production-oriented activity or utility. Resource recovery from wastewater comprises both sides of the canonical circular economy diagram. The recycling of water and nutrients, as well as the conversion of pollutants into energy or chemicals. Especially the last, production of chemicals is still largely undervalued. However, the potential they have is much higher since they have a higher added value than nutrients or energy and therefore might drive the economics of the full-scale wastewater-based resource recovery factory. On this slide you see the work of one of our PhD students, Philip Karain, who recently made an overview of all the current processes proposed for water reuse, energy production, nutrients recovery and chemicals production. You can find all the information in his paper. Here, just have a look at the boxes. Each one represents a different technology. Gray boxes indicate the technology that's applied at full scale. Blue boxes indicate technologies that are still in the blue skies of academia. It is clear that, for obvious reasons, water resources, so water recovery is already quite developed. Whereas for the other compounds, there are still many bottlenecks preventing market uptake. Let's see why this is the case. Currently, resource recovery by utilities is largely embedded in the daily activities of operation. This means that water utilities have mainly internal drivers for making decisions on resource recovery that are then used to communicate with the public on the developments of the external driver, the circle economy. For instance, we have water as one of the compounds which is very logical to recover, but that's mainly done useful there where there's water shortage. For instance, in the Netherlands, that's still very limited. We have phosphate, which is presented as a recovery, but usually decided to recover it because it saves cost in maintenance for scaling, etc. Energy, the energy production is mainly driven by the fact that sludge production is minimized. So for each recovery point, there are usually internal factors which um, are behind the decision-making process. There is no change in the organization from a service provider to a production company. So a major bottleneck is currently not the technologies to recover materials or reasonable cost, but it's the market structure. There is enough technology, but the uptake is not there. The traditional chemicals and products markets are used to working with one large supplier. That means factories producing consumer goods get their supply from a big entity and in the end distribute the goods to the consumers. When products are, however, produced at wastewater treatment plants, this means the market will have to adapt to a system with many small suppliers. For instance, in the Netherlands, there would already be 300 potential suppliers. Uh, <clears throat> moreover, wastewater is a public good, whereas the consumer market is a commercial environment. This public-private transition in the value chain is something that does not yet exist and needs attention in order to prevent future social political problems, hindering the chain development of for the recovery of resources. To illustrate some of the problems, this slide summarizes some aspects of products and market. I took phosphate here as the example, because it's one of the main recovered products at the moment, which has huge problems to come on the market. This is for a large part due to the fact that the amount of phosphate to recover at the waste for treatment plant is a very small fraction of the phosphate market. And so you have no influence. Where the bottleneck is then often suggested to be the regulations. The real bottleneck is formed by the limited efforts to organize a market that's related to the product volume and quality of the recovered phosphate. 
This is the same for many other products, as for instance, the cellulose. If you recover it at the treatment plant, you have a small impact on the market. However, for biopolymers such as PHA and Chimera, the market is very different because there it's the dominant factor on the market. And that me would mean that from the recovery factory, you will have a really market influence. And that's another reason to better focus on chemicals recovery over nutrients and, and energy. Another bottleneck is that currently main unit processes are developed. They are developed more or less in isolation of the rest of the, the resource recovery factory. But in the end, there needs to be a process integration. Recovery of polymers will affect the recovery of phosphate, energy, and maybe water. And the total system has to be optimized instead of the sing single units. Within the water mining pro program, we will especially try to explore this for the case of Nereda technology, coupled with Chimera production. Um, on the, this slide, you will see a picture of a Nereda installation. On the left-hand side, you will see the wastewater treatment plant of Groningen. And on that slide, you see on the top part, the old installation. On the bottom part, you see the Nereda plant. And the, both aspects of the plant treats roughly the same amount of wastewater. And you can appreciate that the bottom uh, installation is much smaller. So with a much smaller land area use, we can treat the wastewater. And that's the reason that Nereda gets more and more introduced. Now, in this Nereda plants, the bacteria grow as granules. And the bacteria do that by producing a gelling compound. And that gelling compound, that is what potentially has market value. Currently, there's an extraction, a first extraction um, uh, unit for extracting the Chimera from these granules and um, scaling that up. So now let's see why Chimera might be an interesting product. One of the interesting applications is the use of Chimera as binder for composite materials. It can very well bind uh, inorganic materials and make a plastic-like compound. Here as an example, clay and chimera make a material that resembles the nacre ma material of shells, something which is not possible to make with chemical polymers. This material has many applications, but one of them, a strong barrier for water, has led already to the application as curing compound in cement industry, which is currently on the market as Delft Green. Chimera can also be combined with cellulose, for instance, recovered toilet paper, to make a mother of pearl-like material. This shows also that it's possible to derive extractive materials from what you flush through the toilet. If you are interested, Google on hidden gems from wastewater and watch the video by our PhD student Suellen Espindola. The material characteristics are unique and not reached by, by oil-based polymers like high stiffness and non-flammability. This gives opportunities to unique product applications, certainly there where the non-flammability of Chimera is, is an extra advantage. As a conclusion, resource recovery factories can be designed. There is a, quite a lot of technology and new technology will still be developed, but the real bottleneck will be in integrating this into the economic system of society which likely means that wastewater utilities have to change a bit from a service-oriented institu institution to a production facility. And I'm looking forward to, within the water mining project, give a big push to resource recovery from wastewater with all the different programs which are there. And thank you for your attention. Hello again. So this was the keynote lecture from uh, Mark and you can ask again your questions in the chat function on the live stream event. I will then see the questions here, but uh, so far we haven't seen any questions yet. So uh, we go to, uh, to Mark directly and, uh, and ask him really, you know, when I see this presentation, uh, a lot has happened, but there's also still a lot that needs to be done if you want to get that integration realized. So how, how many demonstration factories should we build to make this happen? Well, it's a demonstration factory is not by definition leading to implementing um, resource recovery. The demonstration factory is a key step in the scale up. So the first thing you have to realize if you build a demonstration, if in the final, if you scale up the process after the demonstration, there will still be a viable option. 
and uh, realizing that in that scale up, what are the bottlenecks and implement that well in the demonstration factory will help there. Hmm. Um, and it's uh, not about showing that something is possible in a technical way, but also in uh, thinking about hmm. how it in the end is also possible in a societal and an economic uh, operation. And that's uh, too often, I think, forgotten or not taken well enough or seen as too positive. Maybe to add to that question from Patricia, I saw in the presentation that you say that technology is there sometimes. Mm -hmm. So the, the problems and the bottlenecks are about the market, the market structure, right? So the water recovery, it is a very well developed market, but not maybe the same with the material side. And I saw, for example, the phosphate. And you said that phosphate, um, you can recover from the wastewater treatment plants, but the volume is not that significant to compare with the need, the, with the demand of the phosphate on a global basis. Mm -hmm. So you would need to restructure the market. How would you see that, to restructure the market and enable the penetration yeah. of secondary raw materials like Calmera or phosphate? Yeah, so Calmera and phosphate would be very different. But uh, if you take the example of phosphate, um, it's not a matter of restructuring the market. Because if 95% of the market is just through the big mining and the, the way it's going now, and even if you recover the phosphate from wastewater, you will not replace this 95%. You will take a small fraction of the total. Um, you have to realize that you will not change the market. You will have to think, if we recover phosphate, what can we do with it? Not just to supply the, the current market, because you're too small player on it, but to find ways, attractive ways, to either use it in a local economy, where people sometimes have preference mm -hmm. for that, or find different products to put it in where you have a dominant position mm -hmm. and like for camera that's w this will be a very different uh, uh, thing because there is no market with where it will be replaced these are new products we are making or trying to to develop and then of course the situation is entirely different mm -hmm. so it makes uh, quite a difference and in water it's again different because water is a, is kind of essential and as soon as there's water shortage recovering water is for everybody a, a no-brainer but like in a country as the Netherlands, recovering water is not always that obvious. That's and probably also not always needed even, mm -hmm. because as you can see in the background of this video also, there's quite a bit of water in the Netherlands anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then it depends very much on the regional. Okay, so then initiatives also at local or regional level play a role, and that, that is the social aspect as yes. well, because you need to organize that somehow, and then social activities could help. Would you see, apart from the social part, also a policy aspect? Would you see a problem with the current legislation and regulations? Um, yes and no. Um, I, I think it, I usually prefer to say there's no problem with policy because too many people point to policy as a reason that things don't work. Mm -hmm. Whereas, in fact, it's an economic or social problem mm -hmm. and not a policy problem. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, policy is sometimes inhibitive, but if you put that as the only focus on and you neglect the real problems, it's a distraction of your real problem. Okay. Um, so policy can do things, but uh, in general, if you recover uh, material and you make sure that it's safe and that there is a real demand for that in society, policy will follow in general. Mm -hmm. uh, they will not that much block, uh, it might delay. But the, the first thing is find an application where it works. And mm -hmm. most of the policies, they are in place for certain reasons. Uh, the whole, um, say, environmental policies, there are coming from incidents like the um, Seveso issue or the Sandos uh, fire long ago in the meantime, but that's where the policies come from. So you have to realize why mm -hmm. they are there in order to be discuss why they should not apply now for if you recover something from wastewater. Yeah, but policies in that sense are preventing risk eh, and, and, and yep. safeguarding uh, society's well-being in, in that sense. But uh, when you say the market is leading in, in trying to get this whole resource recovery process on the go, then uh, should we not get a circular market first before we get circular wastewater treatment? No, so we, we should work for circular markets. And in the design and the development of our, uh, our um, sy engineered systems, we should take that into as, a, as one of the criteria in, in what we develop as products. And, uh, um, yeah, with phosphate, it's too often, f as in my view at least, 
that people recover phosphate, put it at the gate of the treatment plant, and then trust that someone will come and pick it up. <laughs> and uh, it should be more um, think about what the product will be and engage the people who, in the end, have to go and use it. But that will be a totally new role, people who are having yes. wastewater treatment plants. Yes, right? indeed. I've got a remark. Uh, it's important to bring the decision makers to the table. We should not forget the differences between the region and water policy makers. This was from Antonio Martins and very well said. We will break now with uh, a new series of partner presentations before we come back to you here in the room to discuss work package uh, two. No, to first go to Violeta from the European Commission, of course. I'm sorry for the mistake. But we now go for the break with partner presentations.